going to take a look at symbol groups in this lesson and a quick way to build your symbol groups. If you're not familiar with symbol groups in Trade Navigator, it basically gives you the benefit of organizing your symbols. We can, uh, as traders, tend to build up our list pretty quickly. So let's go through and look at how to build uh, a symbol group. And there'll be two ways that I'll show you how to do this. Uh, but the first one we're going to do from the symbol grid. So we're going to click on the symbol grid icon. And this opens up the symbol grid list to the left of our Trade Navigator screen. Now from here, we can click the drop-down menu, and you'll notice that there are folders listed here, such as the Dow 30, the Dow Utilities, Electronic Futures, and so on. Uh, these different folders are symbol groups. And so we've created these categories for you so that it'll be easier for you to get to your favorite symbols instead of having to go through um, all 65,000 possible symbols that there could be. Now, from the way that we're going to create our symbol group here, what we're going to simply do is as we're traveling around the entire list of symbols, as we're going from one symbol group folder to another, I'll simply place a check next to the symbols as I come across them uh, that I want to have in my list. Now we can go to different folders at different times. Uh, we don't necessarily have to stay in one folder to pull all of our symbols from that folder. So we'll move around and select the different symbols that we would like to have in our overall list. Now once you've gone through and flagged all the symbols that you would like to place in your symbol group. Now in this example I've basically randomly selected a bunch of different symbols. If you want a folder for only stocks, if you want a folder for only futures, ETFs, you can do that as well. So now that I have my symbols flagged, towards the bottom of the symbol grid, you'll notice that the clear button, save button, and load button are now available. Just want to have that drawn to your attention. We're first, though, going to go to a special folder under the symbol grid drop down menu called flag symbols. What we do this for is so that we can check the symbols that we've have that we have flagged to make sure that at least those are the ones we want to build our group with. We can now decide if we want to remove any of these that we can simply unflag the symbol and then go back and click on the flagged symbol folder again and those symbols will disappear. But once we're ready to save our symbol group, we'll go to the bottom of the symbol grid and now click on the save button. You'll be prompted with two options. We can add our symbols to an already existing list or we can build a new symbol group and that's what we're doing now. The first thing you're prompted with is giving your symbol group a name. Just a little tip, you'll want to put an asterisk in front of your symbol group's name or place a number in front of the name. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now that we have our symbol group created, we can make adjustments to the symbol group. We can make these adjustments now or make the adjustments later. Once we have the symbol group window open, we have three other choices of adding more symbols. If you'd like to add more symbols now, we can click on Look Up Symbols to Add. This will give us a search engine. If we type in a description and then click on the Contains button, we can then narrow the result to only the symbols that have that description. We can also add symbols if we know the symbol name by typing the symbols in directly. If you type in multiple symbols separated by a comma, this will allow you to place more than one symbol in your list. 
Don't worry about duplicates. You can't create duplicates in a symbol group. We can also add symbols from a specific symbol folder. If we'd like to place more than one symbol in our list and then remove the symbols that we don't want. We can also remove symbols from our list simply by selecting the symbols and then clicking on the remove selected symbols using the shift key or the control key to select multiple symbols at one time. Once you're done click the save button or close your symbol group and then you'll be able to access your symbol group from your symbol grid. Once you've created your symbol group, make sure you go back and clear your flag symbols. You won't need them anymore now that you have your own symbol group. Now let's take a look at building a symbol group from the Traders Toolbox. We'll click on the Traders Toolbox icon the first tab that appears is the symbol group. Now we'll click on the new button on the right hand side. You'll notice that now we're back to the same group window that we were earlier. We'll do the same step here for adding any symbols with lookup symbols to add, typing the symbol in directly, or adding the symbols from a specific folder. Remember, we can remove any symbols from our list using Shift or Control and then clicking on the Remove Selected Symbols. Now we're ready to save. Give it a name and remember the tip of adding an asterisk or adding some type of character to the beginning of the name. Click the OK button. Remember the symbol group now has to be closed and we can access the symbol group now from the symbol grid. By applying a number or a special character to the beginning of the name, this will place the symbol group towards the top of the list. This will allow you to access that symbol group faster. If you'd also like to go back and modify your symbol groups, you can do that from the Traders Toolbox clicking on the edit button after selecting your symbol group. Or you can edit or add more symbols to your group by using a right mouse click and using the option to add selected symbols to your symbol group. There's no limitation to the number of symbols that can be in a symbol group. You can also build as many symbol groups as you would like. You can do this in all versions of Trade Navigator. We hope you enjoyed this lesson.